Good morning everybody, welcome back to another video. It's Monday, it's food shop day. Uh, <clears throat> I went there with a shopping list, I only came back with like two bags full, but no wool. And like, I I'm the type of person who, I have to go there with a list. I've definitely been snacking a lot more on high calorie, dense food over the last like week or so. Particularly things like pistachios, dried fruit and those sort of things. So. Oh, what a shame, I'm gonna have to eat some before I close the lid. <laughs> See, our fridge is looking like kind of bare the minute and uh, Charlie's usually the expert at rearranging the fridge and everything that's new gets put to the back and everything that's old gets brought to the front, you know, that's how you're taught to like but I'm terrible at it I just throw things in and then she comes home later and tells me Alright, do you know what, I think I've aced it I think I've aced it, I have filled the veg trays Spaced everything out. I think it looks good. I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get full brownie points for this one. I've actually got a fairly busy day today, trying to act all important. Um, stuff to do this morning, but then I've got a call with Veloskin, uh, who make skincare range. Who make skincare range, and they uh, they support Wahoo Lacol, which is the team I race for on Swift. And now uh, it's a chance to discuss um, things and uh, I'll keep you updated on that. He came down and took a bunch of shots of me a while ago for their product placement stuff and uh, yeah, I'll, I got a call there. Then I got a call later tonight with um, with a guy I coach and uh, we're going to discuss some goals and whatnot moving forward. So uh, I got a lot to prepare for, I got some other things to do, so it's a busy one today. Alrighty, so uh, the last this last this week is just gone. Um, I managed to successfully complete 16 and a half hours of training with a total TSS of 650. So we have an easy day here on Monday. I did three hours of endurance, uh, two and a half hours there of just like basic out, get it done, endurance, endurance, endurance. Zwift race and um, I made a note here I, uh, I've kind of been a little bit conservative with my FTP so I, I brought it down to 350 uh, from something like three th high 360s 370 and uh, just to see uh, how things would go obviously this week I haven't done any training which would indicate uh, that you know I need to lower it or increase it I haven't done any testing I've got a couple of efforts I want to do um, that will give me a gauge. I'm not going to test. I'm not stressing about it. It's not the time here to stress about it for me. So I'm not going to test for a bit yet. And on that note of FTP, I do want to uh, just talk briefly about FTP for a minute. Okay, I wanted to film this earlier, but time got away. So I'm doing it now, but it's no less important. I wanted to actually block off a fair segment of this video to just talk about this and unfortunately I'm talking about FTP. FTP is just one very small part of a very big puzzle of fitness in cycling. Um, it just so happens to be the thing that many uh, online training softwares or racing softwares use to define a rider's strength or category. You can talk to lots of coaches, I'm sure, who an experienced cyclist who will say that FTP is definitely not the be-all or end-all of anything. To use myself as an example, because I hope lots of you know like the context in which I'm speaking in, but Back in May, when I was doing lots of uh, long rides, I was doing lots of sweet spot, I was doing lots of um, threshold, just sub-threshold work, I did a 50 mile time trial. Funny enough, that 50 mile time trial was basically two hours at sweet spot. All of this training and all this preparation, the months and months of work I'd put in, I'd basically not 
necessarily increase my FTP massively, but it had stretched out the time that I was able to sustain FTP. Now, that's not to say that because my FTP hasn't increased, I'm not weaker because of it. I can now hold the same number, but for a longer period of time. Now that to me is a win. That to me makes me fitter and stronger. But to a lot of people, if that FTP number hasn't gone up, or well, they don't see themselves as stronger. But it's not as black and white as that. Of FTP as, as, a, as just one small little piece of, of this big fitness puzzle. As soon as I finished doing those long time trials and I switched it up and started doing way more high intensity above threshold work, uh, what happened? My FTP grew, but the time I could hold FTP dropped. Now, what does this tell me? Well, this tells me that you know, as long as I'm not training for super long climbs or time trials, then that's a good thing actually. Having uh, to, to do those long time trials, I potentially need to be able to ride longer at the highest power I can sustain. And that's great. But if I'm going up short climbs, then that's absolutely useless to me. So if you're aiming for an event, you know, in May or June or even July next year, you know, potentially now you'll be laying those foundations maybe if it fits your schedule. And if you are, don't expect to see that FTP rise. In fact, it may drop, but that's not a bad thing. You know, it's dropping because your stamina is increasing, your efficiency is increasing. You know, all of these, think of it, think of it physiologically rather than looking at numbers and, 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 and thinking if the numbers aren't going in the right direction, then things aren't going in the right direction. If you think of it physiologically, think about that mind, body, muscle connection, then you're going to see improvements. You are seeing improvements because at the end of the day, you're riding your bike and it all comes down to the time of year you're doing things as well. So I know lots of riders locally, but also I've had one or two messages just this last couple of weeks from people who are already struggling with reining themselves in this time of year. And some people saying, um, do I need to do base work when I've done like consistent riding all year? And the answer is, well, you can never have too much base really. And it doesn't do any harm. Uh, so if, if you are, you know, wondering those sort of things, then, then just take a little bit of rest do a nice little base again, nice little build, and work up to what you're doing uh, at the middle of next year. You know, the common thing this time of year is people battle with motivation. They battle with seeing the end goal. That's part of what a coach or mentor can help you with and is there to do, is to, is to hold you back probably more than they push you forward and knowing when to do those as well. And not just on a daily basis, but seeing five months down the line and knowing when you're pushing and knowing when to hold you back. The best advice I can give you to keep things in perspective is to look at your data. Just going back to what I was saying about, you know, my FTP is not going up, but at least I'm doing it for longer. Look at the data, look at the methodology, why are you doing it and what is the purpose? Why am I doing it now? rather than why aren't I doing intervals now and goals. The biggest thing, keep the goals somewhere you can see them because that will always keep you on track. And if you see your goals and you know they're six, seven months away, then you know that what you're doing right now is the right thing. Two hours done, three sweet spot efforts, 15 minutes with five minutes rest in between. Used a group ride to good effect and uh, latched on to whatever group was left I could find in the last hour. So um, all in all, a good session because there is a storm brewing outside. Okay, I hope I didn't come across as being like lectury like trying to teach you to suck eggs or something in this video. Uh, I, 
I just sometimes I need somewhere to like blow off steam and a video is like the easiest place because I can just like talk about it and not having to type or write things down. Yeah, I just get really passionate about it sometimes and I just hope that you're enjoying your cycling. So that's gonna end this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.